Okay, greetings everybody. How do you do? Welcome back. Uh, I am Vormithrax, if you're new here, and uh, I'm going to be checking out and just poking around at an upcoming game called Kingdom Dungeon and Hero. That's what this is. Okay. Um, so it's not due out for full release uh, until July, I believe. Um, it's in its near final stage. Still got some polishing, some bug fixing, and stuff to go. So we're probably going to run into an issue or two here or there. Um, that's fine. I'll just report those to the developer and uh, let them know. Um, very responsive to uh, player feedback. So um, what we got here is a Fantasy Kingdom war game. It's mostly a war game in a fantasy realm harks back to some of the good old days war games I used to play in the, the distant past. <laughs> um, but it's also got a melded in kind of RPG light dungeon delving system where we're going to be recruiting heroes and we can use heroes as managers for our towns, as governors for our towns. We can use them as generals for our armies. We can form them up into parties and send them on adventures and local sites of mystery and mayhem, um, getting fame and money and resources and magic items and so on to help us out. Uh, we'll be dealing with diplomacy with various kingdoms. There's an overarching enemy and storyline and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's got a lot of other play modes as well, so it's interesting in that regard. But um, yeah, let's uh, let's give it a look. So I've been playing around with it for the last couple hours, just kind of poking around at the interface and um, uh, sending reports in on things I think that uh, might need a little bit of polishing here and there. But um, overall, it looks like it's fairly functional. So let's uh, let's give it a try, see uh, what we can uh, what we can get up to. So it's a new game. Um, number of different scenarios that allow for different gameplay types and styles and different maps and number of countries in the realm and so on. It can vary it up quite a bit. And I'm not going to go into all of that stuff right now. I'm just going to jump into the main storyline, uh, kind of mission. And I am not going to read these walls of text. <laughs> so I will, uh, I'll leave it up. It's tiny text that I can't change on this screen. I can change the UI element size when we get into the game mode but I can't change this part. Um, so, you know, it's a fantasy storyline. There's bad guys. There's good guys. Uh, evil is going to rise and we're going to try to be the kingdom that, uh, that wins. Uh, game ends after 15 years, which is approximately 180 turns. The kingdom with the most victory points wins the game. Attaining the unity runes or achieving the corruption curse as the main villain will gain that kingdom many victory points. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be not the bad guys in this game. I'm not playing them yet. Um, we're going to be kind of one of the side nations, a fairly strong one, I think, but, uh, kind of a side nation and we're going to see what happens and see if we can stay alive and what we can do. Um, but yeah, this is, I think the largest of the scenarios that are, that are on offer. So we'll hit start on that. And then we get to pick a few things. So these are all the nations we can play. The game's fully featured in regards to multiplayer with the restriction of hot seat or play by email type games. So you do a round robin, uh, I go, you go style. It's not a, we go version. It's an, I go, you go. So you can just email the file around. I don't know if it does it automatically. I haven't looked into the multiplayer stuff yet, but, um, Every single one of these could be a player uh, controlling one of these nations, basically. So we're going to be brighter kind uh, as our, our nation. So a battered and war weary kingdom formed for survival due to the constant raiding from the neighbors over the years. Many smaller lords organized and agreed to form a united and just kingdom for the betterment of all their peoples. On every 10th year, a new king is voted on by all the lords to protect their lands from the evils around them. Their greatest asset is their unity and ten <clears throat> tenacity at facing the enemies of their lands. So there's quite a bit of lore behind the world and all the um, all the countries and um, and backstory and rivalries and all that kind of stuff. We are a benevolent natured uh, kingdom, meaning we're a good guy. Um, there's six different levels, I think, shading from the good guys to the neutral guys down to the evil bad guys. Um, I forget exactly how many there are, but they, they have names for each of the types and, um, you know, those have effects in the game, especially diplomatically. Our advantage is we are a focused master, teachers of meditation, inner peace, recruited clerics and druids get plus one conviction. 
Uh, it's a hard difficulty. That's fine. I don't know enough to really realize if that's going to be an issue or not. And then we have kind of standard medieval kingdom uh, units. Nothing too out there. We're not like necromancers or a wizard warrior nation or anything like that. So pretty straightforward. Uh, we're playing with visible fleets. So you can change some of the things, turn them on and off. I'm just going to leave these default options uh, the way they are. Uh, yeah, we'll just leave that. We're not playing with any particular bonuses. Um, and we're all set. Let's go ahead and hit start. And we'll jump in. Hey there, Andy. Greetings all. <laughs> I think all is me and you. <laughs> Maybe a few other people have wandered in. What time is it? It's 1 a.m. my time. So this is one of my insomnia streams. And uh, I guess it's time for the folks across the pond to be up and moving around here over in the uh the us uh there's not many people loving around probably okay first things first i thought i had set you down a little ways there music volume we'll go to one one percent until i get tired of the music which i'm sure i will Hey there, the Vub and Doom Doug. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is our capital, Mirabilis. We zoom out a bit. We are brighter kind, so we're kind of this peninsula country right here. Uh, our country border goes right up along here. And then the whole boot. <laughs> uh, so we're, we got the split sea, we got the southern sea. We're bordered on to the east by Cartier and the west by Morator and the north by uh, Tarawin. Um, yeah, so here's the full map. We got the guys to the north and then the map goes down like so. A lot of territories, a lot of countries. Okay, um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the game. Uh, it's mostly a war game with some light kind of... Uh, kingdom management features. We're going to be building things. We're going to be protecting things. Uh, there is an economy there. Um, th this is going to control how many units we can field and things like that. Um, and a bunch of other things. We're also going to be recruiting adventurers, hero units to go do different things. We can assign them as governors to our towns to improve their uh, output of their resources. Uh, we can have them... Uh, go on adventures in dungeons that we're going to locate and places of interest around the countryside. They're going to chase down rumors and then go try to find those locations and uh, go clear out dungeons for, for glory experience, gold shards, magic shards, artifacts, magic items, all sorts of stuff. And they can also be the generals or leaders of our armies. They also die a lot, so, you know, don't get attached to any of the heroes because <laughs> they're just going to keep dying in waves. Um... All right, music, you you snuck up on me again. All of a sudden, you seem too loud again. All right, off you go. I don't understand why every game I play, I have to put the music at like 1% or 2%. What is with that? All the games are like this. I'm not the only one that has this problem, right? I mean, I, if I put it to 100, I feel like my skull would cave in from the shockwave of the noise pressure <laughs> from my headphones they would just shatter my skull i'm always down around the one to two percent and even then it seems too loud most times <laughs> so what is it with that Ugh. is it a system setting thing do i just always have my system settings maxed and that makes the games always seem like they're super loud what what, what was what's going on there all right don't mind me it's late early whatever um, so I'm not going to go into all the details about all the game elements. This isn't a how to play video yet. This is me tinkering. So that's very much what I'm doing right now. You guys are along for the ride while I just kind of tinker with stuff. And I'm going to be, if I find something that's wrong or buggy or I don't understand, I'm going to be taking screenshots and posting them on the discord channel for the game, uh, for the dev to take a look at. So, um, this is very much a me just kind of learning how to play myself. I got a fairly good idea of most of the UI elements and how to, how to do things, but I have no idea of the balance or the timings or how long it's going to take resources to generate. All of that is still mostly a mystery to me, but in a nutshell, we've got, uh, Cardyar 
so let's do this. Uh, we do have some buttons up here. So we have an economy button. This shows the economy for our nation. And it's going to show things like our production of these various resources. We have a market where we can buy and sell the resources, food, iron, wood, horses, stone, and shards. All of these are needed for us to be able to build and uh, maintain and support units in the field. We've got the different cohorts that this nation is allowed to uh, purchase and field, and they all cost various resources um, for both building and maintenance. Um, so we've got standard kind of medieval kingdom stuff, armored knights, light calves, swordsmen, spearmen, etc. And they mostly behave like you would expect in a, a fantasy war game uh, with the rock, paper, scissors kind of matchups and the combat system and all that. Um, we got a lot of other info here. One thing of note is that we've maxed out our food storage and we're basically letting food rot because we have nowhere to put it. Uh, food is one of the most important things in the game. All right, sound. <laughs> I thought I zeroed you. I'm going to keep pushing this. Yeah, it keeps sneaking up on me. Um, I guess I didn't zero it after I had my, my talk about the volume. Uh, so yeah, food is one of the most important things. So that's this right here. We're generating enough right now that we're letting food rot. So I'm going to sell a bunch of excess food on the marketplace, um, just to gain us some cash and to keep it from rotting unnecessarily. The game does model weather over the periods of time. So we're coming through the end of winter right now. And depending on where we're at in the world, if I hold the tab key over the mini map here, that shows kind of the weather systems where we've got good weather for growing and so on. And it varies depending on what month we're in and whether we're in winter or summer and so on. But the general rule is you get more food in the summer, you get less food in the winter, and you've got to balance that with your population versus how much food storage you have available. So you want to increase your food storage capacity and you want to increase your food generation as your population grows and as you try to fill more units and so on. So it, it's got a bit of a balancing act. I think each nation is different in regards to their starting statistics and resources and specialties and so on, but I haven't really played anything else yet, so I don't know the balance. Um, I just know this bite, brighter kind. They're the only ones I've, I've kind of monkeyed around with for a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we have a, a marketplace here we can buy and sell, and as soon as we sell some, the price goes down, and if we sell again, the price goes down further. So you can only sell in increments and then the price adjusts after each time you sell. Um, it's got a bit of a, uh, an economy, a, a worldwide economy where there are nations that act as kind of liquidity funders. They, they guarantee the flow of goods and money. And uh, I don't know all the details on exactly how that works, but there can be a problem if that nation gets toppled and uh, other ones provide balancing for each of the various resources and it can get kind of interesting from what I've read. Um, but yeah, so there's a marketplace we can buy and sell, we can build stuff. Um, we have things we need to do now, mostly we're not going to be doing things like building, Oh, a, a farm here. It's not that kind of game. So the kingdom has kind of got its own base level of resource generation. And then we're going to be building certain buildings within slots that are available in each, um, each location. So when I click on my, my capital here, we have this many slots. So right now there's a barracks built and I've got this many additional building slots, which is based on the size of my population. Um, I think it's every two population, you get a slot rounded up. Um, so if you have three pop, then you get two slots <clears throat> and four pop would be two slots. And then five pop would be sl three slots, etc. Um, so as your population grows, you can have more buildings. Well, one of the buildings you can do is like a harvester, and this is going to increase our production of food and wood. So that's how you increase the resources in your area uh, of your kingdom. It's not like we're going to go out here and we're going to build something on this tile. Um, it's all done through the building slots in the towns. Um, so that's kind of how that's going to work. Uh, so we've got all that. This is the district screen. If we click on any one of our little towns, we can see the district information specifically for them. These are all the buildings we can make. Different costs, different time to build, different benefits. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. 
Um, then we've got the research screen. So this is the full list of research. And mostly this does these things here. It's going to increase the morale of our army units, which I'm not going to go into the details on what that does specifically. But, you know, in general, it increases the morale for our army units. Gives the cavalry advantage uh, for the calculations during fights. Increases armor and healing values for both our heroes when they're in dungeons, as well as our military units on the field. Etc. And then some of these down here increase the output of those harvesters I taught, told you that we're going to build in the cities. So we build the harvester unit in the city, and then it gives us this much per the level of research that we've done. So if we research harvester to a higher level, we'll get more output out of each of those buildings. So that's how you kind of go through and you figure out what your kingdom is short on or what they need the most and then you kind of focus that in your building slots and your research so you can either enhance something to do more with or you can cover a shortfall um, but that's how all that's going to work we have a number of alchemists that we can assign to the jobs the more you put on a single job it's diminishing returns so you don't want to just slap six of them on one it's better to spread them around to get the best effect it'll take a little longer to get any particular thing done but you get more of a an overall increase um, so let's just throw a few, we'll throw a couple in formations, we'll throw a couple in harvesting, and I'll throw a couple in armor and heals. And we can get more alchemists through building a certain building. Um, I think, I forget the total, I think it's 12 or 20 alchemists, I think is the max. There, there's a max number, I forget what it is. Um, that's how research works. There's four levels, I believe. I, either you start on Neophyte and then you can go up three levels. Maybe that's how it works. Um, but there's three or four different levels that you can go through uh, as we assign these workers. Um, it's kind of a die roll depending on the workers and you'll gain some progress. When it hits 30, we're going to move up to the next level and it'll reset the progress and we'll have to go through it again. And then there's another level and then a final level. And these numbers will increase each time we go up. And that's research. Uh, diplomacy, you know, complicated stuff. We got a lot of nations to deal with. It shows the stance, the stability, whether we have emissaries with us uh, of ours in their nation or theirs in our nation. We can form alliances and trade and go to war and instigate to lower our stance with them and all sorts of stuff. Uh, we'll get into the details of that in a bit. Uh, summary screen is kind of just info screen so we can look at all the locations in our kingdom, what artifacts we found. Um, forces and victory. So it's showing victory points for the different nations if I want to sort by that. But this is just basically a big info screen for lots of different things. Um, any battles we fought, we've got a summary for, we can get details on. Our heroes list, right now we have three heroes that we could hire. We're going to come back to that in a second. But this shows a list of our heroes. We currently can have a 12 maximum. This can be increased by building guilds in the various building slots available in our different locations. Uh, up to a max of, I think, 24 um, is the maximum uh, if you keep building guilds. Um, and you want to have six total characters to send into dungeons. It's a party of six, and you, of course you want a mix of warriors and clerics and uh, fighters and, and so on. There, there's about half a dozen or so different classes, and they all have a pretty detailed listing of skills and stats and traits and items and so on. Um, but currently these are the three that are available to me. I don't think you ever get an option to get more than three in a turn and it randomizes kind of their generation. So we got two warriors and a druid. Um, so moving on, then we have uh, recruits for the cohorts we're going to be developing. We don't have any of those available yet. These are mostly map, uh, modifiers. So whether we show the borders or not, uh, location flags, etc. Um, and then we have all of the, uh, kind of the, settings and options and turn a very nicely put together help file so currently this is the in-game help file you just click on whatever you want to get more information on like if you want to find out about heroes here's about heroes we got uh, warriors clerics adventurers uh, i mean it's basically warrior types healer types the adventurer which kind of be considered uh, the thief um, or rogue of a group he's kind of specialized in Earning more money in the dungeon, uh, finding and disarming traps that you might run into in the dungeon, things like that. Good to have at least one adventurer along. Then you got the magic user sorcerer types of a few variations, and uh, then the evil guys, Dark Adept, Warlock, Magnus, which you, depending on what nation you pick, you want to have access to all of these. Then they have these list of main attributes. 
Uh, they have magical traits, depending on which class they are. They have skill traits, experience upgrades, all sorts of stuff. Makes for a good time. It's just deep enough to be interesting, but not so deep to be just time consuming. So how well it's balanced, I don't have a good feel for yet. Um, he's trying to hit kind of a, a good midpoint of detail versus speed of gameplay um, to keep things moving. So it can be a tough target to hit sometimes. We'll see uh, how we like the, uh, the the balance so far. But it's pretty detailed, so you can click on just about anything and get a fairly good information screen uh, providing info. There is a rule book you can click on. It'll take you to a PDF on the web. Um, that's also a pretty good read, giving you most of the details. I think that still needs some copy editing and uh, updating, but uh, it's getting pretty close to a final form, it looks like. Um, I should mention also, all these screens I've been going through, they have this little info button at the top. And that gives you a pop-out for that specific window, giving you a general overview of what's showing here. It doesn't go into a lot of detail on the what's and the why's and the wherefores, but it does explain in general terms what each of these things is. Um, so it's pretty comprehensive. All the screens have that little button uh, that you can go to to get information. Uh, so UI-wise, it's pretty clean. I, I like the, the UI management. Uh, there's a few little niggles here that I'm going to try to convince them to implement, but um, uh, f generally speaking, you can get to just about any piece of information you want within a button click or two, which is good. There's not buried and buried and buried in menu type stuff. All right. So uh, our, our situation, uh, we are brighter kind. We are playing a good guy nation. So if we bring up the summary screen um, and let's oh, actually, let's look at diplomacy. Uh, Where'd you go, diplomacy? We'll look at the diplomacy screen and we'll go by stance and we'll sort like so. Uh, but now, now stance isn't what I want. Nature, that's what I want. All right, so nature. So benevolent, you know, the really good guys, lawful. And then some of these nations then drop to feudal, which then drops to tribal, which then drops to tyrannical. So that's kind of like the alignment system. So uh, we got the good guys at the top currently with how I have it sorted, and we got the bad guys at the bottom. So we are one of the good guys, and I am going to try to play it RPG uh, style where we're going to try to help the good guys and uh, you know resist the bad guys and all that. So when we do diplomacy, I'll be looking to, um, to do that. So uh, our situation here is this realm here, and I should mention, I didn't realize this at first, and it took me a while to notice that in order to sort this screen, all you have to do is whatever screen you're on, like if I'm on the district screen, I can just click on the particular location and it opens the district for that location. I first thought I had to do this and just get shunted around by each individual location because I didn't have the window open and I was trying to figure out how to get to the screen I wanted or like this town. I was trying to figure out how to bring up the district info for this town and you can't do it impossible to do from the actual map screen but as soon as you open the district's window then you can just click on any town and it takes you straight to the district for that location so uh but they all work like that so if you're on a screen where there are different locations to choose from you just uh same thing for diplomacy so if i open the diplomacy screen and i click on cardiar it highlights cardiar and gives me the information for them or I can check my other neighbor, Morator, and it brings the information up. Uh, but Cardiar is one of the good guys, so they're lawful. And north of me is Terowin. They're also lawful. These guys over here are not. Morator is feudal. Not necessarily evil. <laughs> so, you know, not too bad. But these guys, Aminon, they seem to be really hostile. And they every game I've started so far, they've very quickly gone to war with Cardiar. So, and they're tribal. So I don't know if it's scripted this way or what, but uh, yeah, they go after Cardiar pretty quick. So I'm going to, I'm going to play it. We're going to try to ally with Cardiar, ally with Terrawin. I'll leave Morator alone for a bit and uh, we'll see if Aminon kicks off the war with these guys again. And we'll try to run some troops over there to get in on the action. Um, that's about as far as I've played. I haven't played very far into the game yet uh, in my testing, but yeah. All right. <clears throat> so 
that's the general plan. I'm just going to try to be nice to the good guys, uh, be neutral to the neutral guys, and be uh, you know hostile to the bad guys. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out. Now, it's a kingdom world simulator. There's an overall bad guy that this scenario is, we're going to deal with. I believe it's these guys up here. Uh, if I zoom out a little, the servants of Drail, however that's pronounced. Uh, so they're, they're, they live in this blasted wasteland that used to be a big city that got nuked, magically nuked or something in the past. I haven't read all the flavor background text on it. Um, and they're trying to raise uh, their dead god, uh, bring their dead god back into the world. Um, so they're kind of the bad guys that are going to, I assume, start taking over the local territories here. And then we're going to be facing them eventually. I think Black Crown is considered another fairly negative one. And how they're going to interact with these guys being so close, I don't know. Um, but yeah. So mostly the danger is going to come from the north. I believe there are pirate nations. Yeah, the elite, uh, Excel, yeah, Exilium pirates are living on that island. How much of an impact they're going to have on our coastline, I don't know. Um, but yeah, all of these nations are going to go to war with each other. They're going to have adventurers running around trying to level up and get magic and artifacts. They're going to consume each other and get stronger all in the pursuit of victory points. So we just need to have the most victory points at the end of the game. And if we go to our summary screen, uh, forces and victory. So we can see a victory point list here. And if we look at the notes, the objective is to gain most victory points by the end of the game. Victory points can be accrued in several ways, raising stability through winning battles and keeping your people out of starvation. Heroes adventuring and discovering artifacts, hitting certain achievements through heroes or technology. If we hit the achievements tab, there's a bunch of achievements showing how many points you get if you do them. So there's conqueror and overlord, which is controlling a fifth or two fifths of the realm's population, uh, peace or alliance agreement with 15 or more kingdoms. And then the big ones, an isolationist, no wars for the first half of the game, gets you a big, big pile of points, build a victory unit, which is very particular units. Apparently, I don't know the specifics on that one. Um, controlling 100 strength points in navies, adventuring, getting magic items, owning an artifact, uh, mastering the intellect research or conviction research, etc. Owning all five unity runes, apostle. Apparently that's like the good guy victory, I think. And then if you're playing the destroyer, and apparently you can play the bad guys, uh, if you get the villain's corruption curse at 1,000, I think that wakes up the dead god, and then you get 480 for that. So those are the biggest ones, but there's other ways. So depending on which nation you decide to play, there are paths to victory that you might pursue uh, and or there are difficulty levels. I mean, some of these nations are brand new or very small or very weak compared to the other ones. So they're going to be a lot more of a challenge to try to stay alive through all of the conquering and uh, evil doing and, and so on. So how much of that's going to play out in an interesting way? I have no idea, but uh, let, let's kind of find out. So we've got units scattered around on some of our sites. They're mostly militia units. Uh, we've got swordsmen and militia here. Our only real army is located here. It's got swordsmen, two of three swordsmen, an archer, and a militia. I'd like to get a cavalry unit added to that. I think it's a limit of six for both the uh, armies, the co co cohorts you put out, as well as your adventuring groups going into dungeons with heroes. Um, but I'd like to get a cavalry unit, but they take a ton of horses, a ton of horses. So it's going to take us a while to beg, borrow, steal enough horses. Uh, otherwise, it's mostly militia units. It's just light militia scattered around between most of these locations. Our only other town of note that has a decent economy is this port, Grimhill Fastness. We've got one more port over here, guarded by an archer and a swordsman. Um, and that's pretty much it, but it doesn't generate much in the way of resources currently. Um, so there are numbers listed below here that this number is the fortification level and it's super expensive to raise this, but it gives you a really big defensive advantage if you can get the fortification levels up. So we got lots of tasks. We need to, uh, grow our economy. We need to recruit heroes and go on adventures. We need to defend our borders. We need to fortify our ports. I'd like to get our ports fortified as much as possible. Uh, I'd like to get a militia unit, at least in every town. Uh, lots of things. And then we're going to ward against any hostility. I don't know if more Tor will ever come, become hostile to us, but I'm definitely worried about these guys, uh, especially if they gobble up Cardier. So that's going to be my focus initially. 
And we're going to form diplomacy with just about everybody we can that's on the good guy side and get lots of trade agreements going. So there's a lot of uh, layered depth to the game that's not readily apparent at this level of my explaining and you're seeing the interface. Um, the manual goes into good detail on just how deep down the rabbit hole the simulation goes without having it all being player fronted. Um, so you'll kind of see what I mean as we play. But let's just do a turn real quick. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the economy. I'm going to sell some food because we are overproducing our storage right now. So I'm going to sell 20 units of food. So it went from uh, 10 at 40 to now it's 10 at 30. And it'll keep dropping as I keep selling. But that gets us down uh, enough food. We're now at 47 out of 67. And our generation isn't going to max that out. I'm basically going to be selling one to two food every turn because we're overproducing what we need right now. And it's just going rotten anyway. So um, now that we've done that, let's go to districts. And I'm going to tell it to build here. And I would like a marketplace, which we don't have the wood or the stone for yet. Uh, we need 30 and we need 10. So we're just short. I'm not going to buy those. We'll have them next round with our resources. So we'll wait a turn before we're going to try to build anything new in our districts. Uh, let's go over to research. We've already assigned our idle alchemists. So they'll just do research each turn. Diplomacy. I'm going to wait a turn for things to kind of settle out. Then I'm going to start. And actually, I can start now. Let's get this going. So Cardiar. Uh, let's go ahead and send it on. I've got, uh, I got four emissaries available, so I'm going to send an emissary to them. I'm also going to send an emissary up to Terrawin. And across the water to Aquius. And also Lux. All right, so emissaries are each turn going to attempt to raise our standing with that kingdom until I move the emissary somewhere else. So... It's some random die rolls, but hopefully we raise our status. You have to have certain status levels to initiate certain diplomacy options. Um, so that's all the diplomacy I need to do this round. I'll do more trading and stuff next round after the cycles. Don't need summaries. Don't need battles. I do need heroes. So we have our three heroes. They always recruit to your capital. Uh, we got Warrior, Druid, Warrior. I'm just going to grab them all. And these only show you the class and a little tiny bit about what skills they're coming with. So this guy, the Druid, is coming with the Sylvan, which gives a 15% leaving adventure bonus. Sometimes it's hard to get out of dungeons, um, so you get a bonus for making that attempt. He's a healer unit, and he also have, has Aegis, which adds armor bonus for the group. Um, we need all three, though. And that next round, hopefully we get like a wizard sorcerer type, an adventurer... And maybe a, either a cleric or another wizard sorcerer type. I'm not sure if I want uh, two cleric, two healers or two sorcerers, but I just don't want 18 warriors. Unfortunately, this nation has a propensity to generate warriors. Uh, so it might take us a while to get some of the other types. But let's go ahead and recruit them all. Now, next thing we're going to do is uh, on the screen here. Now, I should also mention... Um, the map scrolling is very smooth and there's a bunch of options for changing things. So I can come in here and I can change the unit info to blocks or to icons or to figures. You can also easily up and down the scale of the interface with uh, the bracket keys. So I can increase the UI elements or decrease them to whatever the comfort level is. I tend to play fairly large UIs for folks that watch my streams on phones and tablets. So uh, hopefully this is a, a pretty clean representation. There are a few things that I have found that is a little bit problematic when I change the UI scale where things don't, don't, they start overlapping each other. They don't adjust properly. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll deal. What we're looking at here is we now have two different types of units. We have the army here. That's my, my main cohort army. And then we also have the group of heroes. So if I click twice, I can see the hero group. I can say, I just want this guy to move, so I can move any one of them I want. Six is their movement number. Three is how many are there. So this is the strength of the unit. This is its movement. It does cost different movement rates to move armies different places, but hero groups can just move six spaces. doesn't really matter what they're moving through. They're a small unit, and they can go anywhere within six spaces. But what we're going to do first is now we look down here, we have a gather rumors option. 
So the job of the heroes initially, for me at least, is we want them to go and, you know, drink at the bars and chat with the people and gather rumors. They're going to try to find the hidden bandit dens and temples and ruined fortresses and caves and so on. But we have to go gather the information so that they appear on the map. Then we'll go check that location to see if it's a real rumor or if it's a real location or, or somebody was just telling tales. So I'm just going to be using these guys to spam this gather rumors, rumors option for a little bit. So I'm going to separate them, actually. So we'll do Angan. I'm going to send you up here. And I'm going to send Vimal down here. That way each one of them can now gather rumors from their particular location. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> Fortunately, he used all of his his uh he can't do it this turn, so next turn he'll be able to do that. It has to, it costs a movement to do the fine adventures. But this guy will be able to. Alright. For some reason, all the adventurers for these guys are right in this area. <laughs> right, right in here. Right in this swamp and stuff, which doesn't matter for the hero units, but and then you should also be able to gather. Ooh, three locations. Alright, so these are possible sites. Uh, we'll have to visit them and check them out to see if it's real or not. And if it is a real site, then it's going to vary between low danger, medium danger, high danger, and extreme danger. So there's four different difficulty levels. We only want low for the moment. Anything else, we're likely just going to get slaughtered in. Um, obviously, the more dangerous, the more lucrative. And if you want artifacts, those are only available in the hardest, the extreme dungeons. Um, all the other ones could possibly provide you with magic items as a final reward. And I'll show you the combat system and how the dungeon delving works once we actually locate some stuff. But I'm probably going to spend another turn at least just gathering rumors and populating a bunch of these things. And then we'll start moving out and checking them. And then when we find some low ones, we'll gather everybody up and we'll dungeon dive. Um, all right. So we're almost done. This is more explaining. It's, it'd take me like 30 seconds to actually do my turn as opposed to right now when I'm explaining everything. Um, but you can see our heroes here. We can just click on this to jump right to their location. We can see their level, see what type they are. This means that the heroes at the capital, uh, we can sort. Magic items can be stored at the capital vault, and you can hand the magic items off to whatever character you want. So characters can have three different items. There's a weapon slot, an armor slot, and what's called a mine slot, which I also consider more like an, an accessories slot. Um... And, you know, they're used for various bonuses uh, to increase stats or power and so on. Um, but let's go ahead and get out of there. Okay. Uh, winter time, huh? So let's go. Uh, we're done there. We're done there. I think we're all done, really. We've done all the things. Let's go ahead and process the turn. And yes, no, or save the game. I'm just going to say yes. We'll let it continue. So many kingdoms. There won't be much happening for the first couple of rounds, but then wars will start kicking off. All right, so you get a turn summary, and mostly you can scan this. It's usually pretty much the same each round, and you just look for particular things that might change. But it's telling me production's at 100% due to stability. We've got a high stability value um, for our kingdom size and such. This is our locations, meaning our little towns and hamlets and capitals and so on. Uh, 50 stability. No bureaucratic production corruption yet. I think you have to be above 60 size or something to before corruption starts. And then you can counter it with certain buildings, courthouses and stuff. Um, our current stockpiles again, but this just gives you kind of a breakdown. So it's letting me know that 55 food was produced, 31 food was required to feed the population, 13 required by our armies and navies. So that only totals 44 out of the 55. So we're producing 11 over our needs each round. So that's why I said earlier I wanted to sell food so that we were not wasting it when we maxed out our stockpile. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to keep selling 10 to 20 every turn until uh, a little bit later. So we're coming out of winter. We're actually going to have more food produced pretty soon and um, be able to sell even more every round. Um, but certain nations, depending on where you're at in the world, uh, it's it. Again, if I hit tab over here, you can see kind of the weather bands and where food production is going to be impacted due to the weather. 
Um, and it changes over the seasons. So we're coming out of winter right now, heading into summertime, and these bands will change as summertime rolls in. Um, and the general rule is if you're in a winter area, you get half food production. If you're in a summer type rainy area or time frame, you get um, 50% bonus um, production on food or double. I, I forget how it works exactly, but that's the idea. You get more food in the summertime. Um, so we're, we're overproducing, uh, where'd my summaries, so, uh, what else is in there? So we have a surplus of food. Uh, we spent gold on upkeep for our armies and maintenance for our buildings. Nobody's out of supply, nothing new to report from our alchemists. They gained probably some research, but nobody actually got a breakthrough to a new level. Um, diplomatic reports. So our stance, our, our, our happiness level or reputation level with various uh, nations is slowly dropping. If we don't do something to increase it, it'll just keep dropping to a certain equilibrium point. Um, and then our emissaries, uh, we got a status improved with our Cartier emissary. We got no change with our Aqueous emissary, and we got a status stance improved with Terowin. So we got a little bit of an upward bump on those two. Um, and then uh, Lux. All right. And we don't have anything else to report. Okay, uh, so all I'm going to do now is run through my heroes. We're going to gather more rumors and gather more rumors. And then uh, one more. All right, that should give me enough to go check out now. So you will go check this one out. Now that he's on the space, I can say explore the rumor. This turned out to be a false rumor. Nothing here. So next turn, I'll move him down this way. Hero units can cross borders. Uh, military units cannot unless you're allied. Um, and hero units can go into hostile countries and do dirty tricks and do things and stuff, <laughs> depending on, you know, what kind of kingdom you are. You'll have, I think, different options and or you can do dirty things and maybe lower opinion or something. I haven't tried that yet, but I've seen in the manual that there's options for that. All right, you will send over here. Whoops, that was my army, not the uh, <laughs> not the character. All right, so there is something here, and the, the icon has now changed. We don't know how dangerous it is yet, though. So I'm going to tell the unit to enter it, and it'll give us an approximation of the danger level. So... This is extreme. <laughs> we are leaving. I'll let you look at this screen for a second. So the way this works is that it's kind of like the old school blobber type dungeons uh, back in the wizardry. I mean, the way back times of wizardry one and uh, might and magic one and bard's tale and so on, where you had kind of a hex grid and you would move your character just north, south, east, west, on, or not a hex grid, even a square grid back then, you would just say to have your group move north of space or back of space or east or west or whatever, and then you'd have a room on each space. Um, similar thing is going to happen when we actually go dungeon diving. We'll have our group of six characters. We'll tell it to move in different directions. It'll be different rooms, and we'll encounter enemies, and we'll have to fight the enemies, and you'll, you'll kind of see how it works when we get to that point. Um, but this is way, way too hard a dungeon for us. There are 172 enemies in this dungeon. Uh, we're not going here for a very long time. So we're just going to leave. Leaving removes all of his movement points, so he can't do anything else this turn. But it's free to do that, to look in and then get out again. There's one more option on that screen I could have clicked, but it wouldn't have made much difference in this case. All right, then we're going to send you... I think I'm going to send you to this end, and we'll work our way up to the middle, and we'll have this one come the other direction. So we'll go all the way to there. And it is a false rumor. All right. Uh, That was one, two, and three. Yeah, they're all done. All right, so my heroes are done. Let's go uh, back to the economy, and uh, let's sell another food for 40. Uh, go check our districts. Do we have enough for the market? We do have enough for the market now. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to build the market. And what this does is 10% chance per gold to generate a gold. And then also plus two food. So 
We're going to queue up building a market. So my second of five slots is now going to be a market when it finishes building in three turns. Uh, so we're done with economy. Districts we're done with. Uh, research. All of our alchemists. So we can gain new alchemists. There's a chance that a new one will appear. And a certain building we can build will increase that chance. Um, and also raise our cap for the alchemists. How many we can have. We didn't have any change, and so we're just going to continue. They also didn't make much progress in uh, researching that round. Uh, diplomacy. Let's go take a look. Anybody send me any offers yet? Nobody sent me any offers yet. Usually turn three or four, stuff starts getting a little more spicy. Uh, let's check with Cardiar. So Cardiar. We have their emissary. They have our em emissary. We're at friendly 59. I need, I, I think I need 60 for something. I think 60 is a benchmark. Um, we can offer peace. We can uh, open trade, uh, which I do want to do. We can give a gift that improves our stance a certain number of points. Instigate, which lowers the stance between kingdoms. Basically, you can insult the other guy a bunch of times and try to provoke them into war. Or you can just go to war, but you'll lose a bunch of stability when you do it that way. So... Uh, collaboration is a research bonus. Let's just offer peace and offer trade. And I've got two more diplomatic actions we can do. Let's do the same thing for uh, Tarawin. So, all right, that's all the diplomacy I'm going to worry about for this round. Our heroes are all done. They don't have any movement left. Uh, new heroes, more warriors, triple, <laughs> triple warrior. Come on, game. So this guy could be hired to be a leader of one of my armies. He's got a bonus that gives him an army morale bonus. So I could hire him just specifically with the intent to put him in charge of like our main army group here. Um, I don't want to do that quite yet. We are probably going to get into a fight with these guys when they most likely try to invade Cartier. But I am a capped at 12 heroes currently. And it's best to send a full six hero party out into a dungeon. So I would rather have 12 heroes split into two parties, each going back and forth into a dungeon. Because uh, usually when you, especially if you quick finish a dungeon, there's a button to auto finish it. If you do that, you end up, your party goes back to the capital and has to rest for a few days. So it'd be good to be just kind of alternate a group. So, you know. Since I'm capped at 12, that limits my having extras to do governing governing of the, uh, the the villages or the towns or being a general and things like that. So three more warriors. Uh, I already got two. I think I'll grab this one. He's got Thorough, which is a treasure bonus. Now the cash amount here is increased when they have better stats. And I think also when they have these traits, it randomizes stats and traits within certain values. Um, so you could have two warriors that look exactly the same with this part, but they'll have possibly very different values. And the one that's costing more is because he's going to have more statistics, which you can't see until you actually purchase them. So this guy's the most, even though he doesn't have one of these abilities. So he's probably got uh, much better statistics than these two do. Um... So I'm going to go ahead and buy them because I need to get the, the groups put together as quick as possible. And I'm just going to have to hope we don't get stuck with just warriors after warriors after warriors every single turn. But uh, let's go ahead and grab that one for the next adventuring group. And I'm going to grab the middle one instead of this guy. So two warriors per adventuring group uh, for tanks is about right. But I desperately need to get non-warriors next time. Uh, what that does let us do, though, is uh, do some more. Oh, actually, we explored the rumors here. You can only explore rumors one time per location, so I'd have to send these guys to another town. Uh, I think we have enough. Hopefully, we get a low one in the ones we've got. I'll just leave them here. Actually, we'll go ahead and move them out. Uh, they can come down and investigate. Let's send you to... Uh... Yeah, sure. Go to that one. That one's false. You go to that one and enter. That one's a medium difficulty. So there's a scouting option here. Leave with the option to auto explore on. So um, we're going to go ahead and hit that. I don't, I can't, uh, we can't do a medium with auto explore. Our guys are too low level. 
If it was a low level dungeon, I would auto explore it, but not a medium. So this isn't really going to matter, but I'll, I'll do that option. That just lets us later go ahead and pick that option again without canceling it. All right. Uh, you might as well move to there. And our heroes are all done. Okay. Uh, I think that's really going to be it for the turn. We bought our heroes, did our research, we updated our diplomacy. Yeah, off we go. Yeah, it does have a somewhat resemblance to Shadows of Forbidden Gods. I think Shadows is way more confusing than this game, though. <laughs> way more confusing. They're definitely very different types of games, despite the similar motif. Uh, what was that? Oh, so it lights things up when there might have been a change. So if we go to Diplomacy now, we've got somebody... Sending us overtures. So, hey there, Areth Dara, who is benevolent. So they're probably offering trade, either peace and or trade. So we're going to say yes to that. They're benevolent. They're good guys. So we'll accept a trade with them. Solvant also trade. Yep. And Lux, benevolent. Who else we got? Nordenstock, Lawful. Uh, so another thing to look at is economy is weaker compared to ours. Land forces are weaker. So generally, ideally, you want to trade with people of an equivalent level as you. You're going to get more money out of that kind of trade. If we're awesome and they're low, they're going to get a pretty big trade boost. We're not going to make much out of the deal. But I want to be friends with all of the friendly lawful folks. So I'm going to go ahead with it because it doesn't cost me anything to do it. It just gives them a bonus, basically. And you'll see the numbers next round when I'll show these um, summary screen and we can see exactly how much money each side is making for the trade deal uh, but we'll go ahead and accept it and then Sunfall Sect wherever you are sure alright is that it? nope couple of feudals huh I don't know about you I got a bunch of other trade agreements weaker and weak Casper and Islands. Uh, so I think that takes me right there. So what was that? So they're they're out here. That's uh that's on the other side of a couple of oceans or seas <laughs> from where we're at. That's fine. I guess we can do that. It's all about the Benjamins. Morator. Uh they want a peace agreement as well as a trade agreement, sure. All right, so that's all the offers we received. Uh, let's go back over to our section of the world. Is Cardiar at war with these guys yet? They're trustful of us now at 60. I don't think they're at war with anybody yet. Trade agreements, yeah, they haven't been declared on yet, so uh, Amanon has not uh, decided to go after them quite yet. Um, but we want to get uh, we want to get an alliance and then send some troops over because I don't think anybody's going to mess with me anytime soon. Uh, so Cardiar, let's offer alliance. Uh, I got three more diplomatic actions we could do. How about Erwin? We're at uh, trustful also, sure, and Aquit. Uh, then we're only at friendly. We need to get a little bit further, I think. So, um, offer peace and ask to open trade. All right. So we're done with diplomacy, uh, economy. Where are we at? Ooh, George, 54 out of 67. So we're gaining like plus 11, I think, per round. So that's going to put us real close to the max. Ooh, food's up to 52. Somebody out there is buying food. All right. I'll sell 10 at 52. I like it. Dropped all the way to 36 after that, though. Um, let's see. Do I start putting cash? Oh, we got to go check our heroes. Hey, we got... Ooh, look at Magnus here. Baller. 
Aegis adds the armor bonus. Conserver, he's got magic resist. He's a sorcerer, lowers resistance and immune. He's creative, so research and a treasure bonus. Hell yeah, Magnus. Join the party. Now I gotta move. Uh, actually, only one person is in the uh, the group. Oh, he's a Magnus wizard. His name's Jonan. <laughs> I thought Magnus was his uh, his name. All right. Uh, unfortunately, two more warriors. Another treasure bonus guy, but I don't want warriors. I need the other kind of people. So. It'll take us at least another round to scout the rest of these, and then we'll kind of organize, and hopefully next round I'll have uh, another option or two. I have yet to see an adventurer show up for this nation, but I, don't, I think we might have to just suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous traps <laughs> in the dungeons, unfortunately. Uh, so economy, can we build, or districts, I mean, uh, what's it going to take? Actually, I want to look at this one. Um, we can get a market here. So we want markets in places that generate gold. This is the only other place that we have. Uh, Grim Hill. Oh, no, not Grim Hill. Uh, Sentinel Keep. Nope. Watch Bay. There it is. Watch Bay. Watch Bay generates gold. Um, so we want to make sure we put markets in places that generate gold because it has a 10% chance per gold to generate an additional gold. Um, and it gets food. So we're going to build a market here. That'll be it for districts for now. Go check research. So we're two out of 30. Wow. You guys have been doing a terrible job. Terrible, but we got another alchemist. We're up to seven out of 20 max. So, uh, let's put you into a new field. Let's do uh, stone and iron. All right, that's done. We've done diplomacy. Don't need summaries. Let's go jump around to our heroes. So, first hero. It is a fake one. All right. Um, let's do the rest. I might send him back up to this village to get some more. Or to Lightshaven, even. Yeah, let's send him to Lightshaven. He'll get some more rumors. So, extreme and medium, those are not good. You go here. We're looking. We're looking for a light one. Hard, not what we need. And out of points. Uh, you go to that one. Dang it! <laughs> Where are the easy ones? Uh, they're all ridiculous. We'll get slaughtered if I send these guys into these ones. All right, another round or two of us going to get rumors. We can't do any of these. I got to start with the low ones. So next round, we'll have to run everybody back to a town and start gathering more rumors. You can at least do this one. So that unveiled two new spots that we'll be able to check with these guys. I guess I could just park guys up here. They'll gather and these guys will just hop into them and search them each time until we've saturated the forest and swamp here with locations. Um, yeah, so we're done there. Actually, let's move you down to Springton. That way next round he can just immediately do that and we'll hire hopefully somebody new to do this one. So these three will be gathering rumors while these three are out here actually exploring them until we find something we can actually do. All right, heroes are done. No recruits. I think we are all set. See what the uh, Mostly I want to get the alliance with these guys. So as soon as I see the war kick off, we can send an army over to help out. Turn summary. We're still good. Uh, our locations produce more food than expected due to summer rains. So if we hit the tab key, notice how this has changed now. So much more good uh, food production. The bands have changed dramatically because now we're in springtime instead of wintertime. 
So we're doing a lot of food production now. So we have a surplus of 63 food for the next month. So we're about hit our cap. So time to sell lots of food again. Now what we want to make sure of is that we stockpile as much as we can. I'd like to get some granaries put together and built so we can increase our food storage so that we make sure that we can produce through the winter what we need. Um, this thing started right at the end of winter, so we didn't have much to worry about. We were already producing plenty, and this nation might not have that problem. Other nations we could have selected uh, could have way harder time with uh, food during the winter months. So, so far, I haven't seen much of an issue with this one. All right, so no problem there. Nothing new to report. Nothing there. Uh, Cardiar agreed to an alliance. Carowin agreed to an alliance. We got a trade offer. Aqueous rejected our alliance, but they accepted our peace. Actually, I think it was peace and trade. They rejected our trade offer. Um, and a little bit of fall off on some of our relations. All right, here's the trade report. So we made four, they made six. We made three, they made four, five, and six. So here's one of those, Aerith Dara. We got nothing, they got four. <laughs> we got one, they got four. My assumption is Aerith Dara is one of those smaller ones. Um, We'll go look at that in a second. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, we made a fair amount of gold with our trade deals. So we go to uh, diplomacy, uh, name, reverse sort, <laughs> uh, Aerith Dara. So very weak, very weak. And they're at war already with a couple of people. They probably won't be around long. Who are you guys over here? Uh, oh, they're this tiny little place right here. <laughs> God, I hope they're not at war with both of these guys. I didn't pay attention to the names. Uh, that's that's kind of a grim situation there, Aerith Dara. I wish you all the luck. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so... I don't believe there's any kind of limit to how many trade agreements I can have or anything like that. I'm limited how many emissaries I can send out and where they're at to raise uh, status. And I'm limited on how many diplomatic actions I can perform per round. And I'm not aware that there's any way to modify that. I think they're hard set values. Uh, if there is a way to do it, I haven't found it. All right, let's do the things. So check our economy. Uh, we're sitting on 63 out of 67 food. So And we're in the middle, beginning of spring. So we need to sell, sell, sell. So let's do uh, 20 again. Get us some cash. Uh, do I want to start buying stuff? Let's do the heroes first, and then if I have cash, I'll come and buy some more resources so we can get closer to getting a cavalry unit. Before this fight kicks off, uh-oh. Has the fight kicked off? I see a unit in their territory. <laughs> uh, diplomacy, Cardiar, uh, allied. Yep, they're at war with Eminon. All right, it already kicked off. Uh, so let's go diplomacy. I'm going to get in on this action. Hey there, Aminon. Yeah, I got to lose stability to go to the aid of my ally. I don't like that. I'm ally. I, I mean, I, I don't know if the war kicked off before the alliance hit. I was trying to get allied beforehand, and I don't know how the diplomacy system works in that regard. So currently my ally is at war with him, but I'm not. So I have to get to war with him if I'm going to help my ally out. So I don't like that I have to lose stability in order to help my ally. I guess if he sends troops into my ally's territory, I don't even know if I can fight him then. Huh. I mean, this is going to take a while. And we're at suspicious. This is going to be a minus three stability, huh? I think I'm just going to take the stability hit. We're at 58. And I mean, we're in pretty good shape. I'm just going to take the hit and immediately go help my friends out. So let's go to war. And uh, anytime you do a really serious action like this to prevent misclicks, you'll see here it popped up Alt plus mouse click, mouse click to perform the action. So I got to hold Alt and click. Tell it, yep, I'm serious. I really did mean to hit that button. All right, we shall crush Aminon in battle. I would like to crush them with horses. <laughs> My army does not have any cavalry, and you need cavalry to do a uh, kind of a rundown action after the fight. If you force a retreat on the enemy, your cavalry then surges forward, and you get a big bonus on doing damage to the retreating enemy. Um, so I'd like to get at least one unit of cavalry into the mix, but they're so expensive. I don't know if I can get it done. Oh. Oh. 
So we got light cavalry, but it takes a hundred horses and 30 iron. I'm at 24 iron and 44 horses currently. Iron Knight or Armored Knights takes 63 and 70. So we're nowhere remotely near that one. So, I mean, and I can't get to a light to 100 horses anytime soon. They're really expensive. We head on over there. Horses to get 10 of them is 80 of my money. And then it would go up. Or, no, sorry, it's 160. That's the sell button. <laughs> 160 for 10 of them. Uh, so, yeah. It's just going to take a while. I mean, we're gaining 11 a turn uh, from production, but in order to increase this with purchasing, eh, I, I just can't manage it. It's going to take me too long. So we're going to have to forego the cavalry, unfortunately, for this fight, I think. We'll send the cavalry as a follow-up if the fight's still going on afterwards. So for now, I'm not going to do that. Uh, we sold our, 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 our food districts uh that also means i have to be careful what i build because if i use a resource i'm going to need for the armies that i want to put together so i haven't talked mostly about these buildings granary is going to increase our food storage capacity so currently we're at 67 i think um so that would increase our ability to store or stockpile food over time market is the one we did to increase our gold generation and give us a little bit of food Temples increase stability of a local population, um, which would help us get this stability number back up. Uh, library is going to help us with maximize or getting more alchemists and also getting a higher recruitment chance for alchemists per turn. Uh, Council Hall is going to reduce corruption, which is going to be a factor later uh, as we continue to grow. Barracks, uh, this is where you can deploy trained or better units. So that list of units that I showed, only militia are untrained. Anything else that you build has to be deployed at a site that has a barracks. Uh, the guild is for increasing your hero maximum capacity. We're at 12 currently for each guild I build. It goes up by one to, again, I think it's 24. Um, the harvester is just straight up increasing our food and wood production based on what level we've researched in our technology tree. Same thing with excavator. It's just iron and stone in that case. And the purifier increases the magic shard production, which is this item here, which is used for the fancy stuff. Mage tower is a defensive item, uh, adds 10 extra attacks of eight range to a location and the nullifier. This one I'm a little fuzzy about, but undead and constructs are minus two combat within six spaces. So anybody shows up with undead and or uh, hostile constructs, were like, which are like golems, um, they're a unit that different nations can produce uh, through resources, and I think mostly shards, um, and they don't require uh, food, which is a big benefit, uh, depending on how your balance of your nation works. Um, but this basically acts as kind of an anti-magic field uh, to make them less effective around the area where that nullifier is built. Um, but we're going to hold off on any of that for a little bit while we'll see how things play out. So let's go look at diplomacy. Did we get any more offers? One offer from the Captosis Guild. Feudal, huh? They want another. They want to trade also. Sure. Uh, do I want to do anything with my diplomatic actions? Hey there, Aqueous. We're now trustful. Let's try uh, open trade again. They are at war with the Eternal Eternali Coven. Mm -hmm. We'll try an alliance next round if we get the trade agreement. Uh, I think I got everything I want from everybody else in the area. So we got the alliance there. We got the alliance, or we got we're working on the trade agreement there. We got the alliance with Terrawin. I'm kind of ignoring Morator at the moment. They're they're actually a place I might want to go invade. So I, I'd like to have a neighbor that uh, leaves me the option so I can, you know, have fun. Um, so I'm not uh, engaging them in diplomacy or anything at the moment. Uh, who else is on the list of goody-goody guys? So diplomacy, uh, nature, and then scroll up. Nope. Reverse the list. Mm -hmm. uh, Aerith Dara. Where is Aerith Dara? They're off to the this area. Oh, that's that tiny nation. That's right. Uh, Leandor is equal or stronger. And benevolent? Where are you guys at? Way out there. 
Oh, the other side of the guy I am going to war with. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. That'd be a great idea. I want to talk to the Scatty, Mars House, and Leandor. So let's bring diplomacy up. Leandor. Uh, so we have nothing with them. We're amiable currently. Let's offer peace and trade. Um, and maybe I'll give him a gift. Yeah, let's give him a gift. All right. And then the other one was Mar House. Utile, huh? Can't do much with them, apparently. Yeah, he's at war with Ammonon already. Oh my god, that poor guy's at war with the Scotty and Ammonon. How do these guys survive if you pick them to start with? That seems like it'd be a really short game. <laughs> if on turn four, you're already at war with all your neighbors. And you're tiny. And then we'll see how you survive that. Alright, uh, how about Scotty themselves? Uh, they are only at war with Mars House. They're tribal. Yeah, we don't have any options with them. Our our stability or our reputation is volatile. So, all right, we don't have any choices there. Well, maybe uh, maybe Leandor, we can get uh, we can get going. Okay, uh, let's get the army moving. Hey, army, get moving. I need to bring them kind of north around this little line here. So we have a bunch of filters we can use. Let's uh, close this for a second. So we can turn location flags on and off. We can turn the borders on and off. Uh, hexes, or this is the hex control. So who controls a space versus who owns it. Um, which is going to come into place when these guys start trading territory through the warfare stuff. Uh, so that's the hexes. Um, so we can show units or not. We can show where the heroes are located. Supply. So we have supply out to there. And it's based on um, any kind of location is a supply point. So we're allied to Cartier. So we're getting access to his supply points. And I believe you have access to like six movement points away from uh, a supply point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. That's all flat terrain. I know rivers come into play. Uh, actually, this is a river. This is roads. So that's why this is so easy to move through. It's all clear, flat ground. Whereas going up into the hills here doesn't go very far because of the cost. Um, so, uh, yeah. You got, uh, you got supply outward from any of these locations. So we're well supplied in our own territory, of course, and most of his. But the terrain to move through these woods is really slow. So I'm going to kind of have to go up and over. So, um, yeah, so I want the main army group heading up that direction. And I think we're going to add in the swordsmen or the militia. You want to mix. We've already got three swordsmen. I wish I had another archer or, or I mostly wanted a cavalry, but I got no archers up in that area. The only other archers I have are way down south. Uh, I guess we'll send the militia. I'll leave the swordsmen here. So go join that group. All right. So we have a full army group or whatever they're called. We have no movement left. And I'm just going to keep working them over this direction to uh, support. Uh, so that's supply. Enemy action. So I think this is showing intentions to move. So this must have been their previous. And this is what they're intending to do. I guess. I'm not sure exactly how this works. Weather. Well, it's rainy in, in our area. <laughs> Lots of rain, which has different effects. And I don't know what events is going to do. All right. So uh, are we done? Have I done my heroes? I have not done my heroes. All right. Uh, let's do, do these first. Or do we finish exploring? I've got one, two sites to explore. Uh, all right, let's move Zarian to there. False rumor. And we'll get you to there. What do we got? Hello! Finally! All right. 
Now, 32 enemies in this dungeon. So we're going to now group up the best group I can put together, and we're going to go explore this dungeon. Um, first, we got to get out of here. It'll be a turn or two before we actually go here, but uh, we'll get out of there. All right. So let's see. And all my guys, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think that's, oh, and six. So we do have six guys out here. Uh, let's see who else we've got to recruit, though. A woodsman, a druid, and an adept. All right. Um, so I think an adept is one of the magic user types. So a druid is another uh, healer variant. Oh, the woodsman. Is that? Hmm. Let's go look at this thing. Uh, heroes. So woodsman falls into the warrior category. Cleric and druid are the healers. Haven't seen an adventurer. An adept is the wizard type. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the adept and the, uh, yeah, the druid. So we'll grab those two and let's send them straight down here. So that gives us in this group the warrior, a druid, and an adept. And then we've got you, which is also a druid, another healer. You need another warrior. And I want a wizard. All right, so now we're at two wizard types, two warrior types, and the druid. So do we send another druid over or another warrior? Let's send another druid. All right, there's our group. Next turn, we'll go dungeon delving. Uh, you have no more rumors to go chasing, so I'm going to send you back to the capital. And you, come on, you will gather rumors here. Got one over there, do we? Let's go check that one out. False rumor. All right. So we'll send these guys in the dungeon. These two will keep generating rumors for the next dungeon. Uh, and we'll keep recruiting each turn till we have all 12 adventurers set up. That's everybody, right? We're done, we're done, we're done. Yeah, I think we're all set. Turn summary. Plentiful amount of food. Well, we almost hit our cap again. We just got to keep selling food like crazy. Um, rejected our generous offer. Rejected our generous offer. <laughs> Alliance offer from Aquia, so they've seen the light. Received a cease war offer from Aminon. No, screw you. We haven't yet begun to fight. Unless you also ceased war with my ally. And we got our trade money. All right. What's it looking like over here? Oh, my ally is marching deep into their territory, huh? Extending our supply lines, are we? So he captured Jiri. Jiri was, it belonged to Amanon. So he captured that and he's now using that as a supply point. Interesting that, oh, I, I believe supply gets cut by proximity to enemy units. So that's why it's not showing any uh, supply past these points, I believe. There, there's a rules for that. I forget exactly how it worked. Manual. All right. Turn that off. So let's see. We got our army here. Let's try to keep marching, see if we can get over there and help out in time. Uh, let's see. We're going to send our adventurers in, but let's do this in order. Let's go sell some food. Oh, it was only at 40 this time. Gets us to 266. I'm going to jump straight to heroes. What do we get? Holy warriors. That's three warriors again, though. Woodsman counts as the warrior. Lock. Holy warriors, huh? 
Yeah, warrior and holy warrior. Hmm. Um. So we've got one decent mix of of, of uh, units in there. We've already got warrior and a warrior. I just keep getting warriors. <laughs> so many warriors. I think I'm not going to buy any of those. Well, maybe I'll buy. Oh no, because I've only got one more group I can put together. So I don't want to oversaturate with warriors. Yeah, I'm not going to take any of these guys. Even though warrior, holy warriors sound cool. And look at those costs. I guess I could buy them and get rid of these two. Because I am kind of interested. I don't know just what kind of difference there is with the holy warrior. I don't know if these costs are higher because they're holy warriors. Or if these costs are higher because they have really crazy stats. Compared to what I've purchased before. Um... All right, I'm curious. Let's just satisfy my curiosity. So we got Omedia, the Holy Warrior. Uh, 11 melee power, huh? Seven leadership, seven armor, nine health. Only eight, but 10 defense versus nine defense. Six magic power versus four. Better armor. Huh. I don't yet know just how important. I, I, I've read the manual and all of these things matter, but I just don't know the balance yet and just how much they matter and what each one affects specifically. That'll take more time to remember. I mean, they look pretty good. If I compare that to like Zari in here, if we do... Uh, you know, let's compare this guy, uh, or Omedia against Zarian. I mean, melee power is four higher. They have magic power. He doesn't have any. A powerful warrior unwavering in the face of evil. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Let's jump back over to uh, districts. So uh, we've got our market. One more turn, we'll have our market built. Down here, we have our market up here finished. So we've got better, more money coming in, a little bit more food. Uh, what am I looking for next up here? Temple. Don't have the stone. Uh, I'd like to get the harvester and excavators going. But I probably also want to make sure we get a mage tower in here in our capital town. So many things I want to build. We're short of shards for the harvester. Yeah, the adventure in the dungeon is going to get us shards. Hopefully we can get that up then. I think I'm just going to keep building up resources for now. Plus we need horses. So I need cash for horses. Uh, let's see. What are they at? Ten of them for 160. Ugh, so expensive. Yeah, we're going to wait. Let's hold off. All right, so no economy, not doing districts. Research, no new alchemists. And we're making slow progress. Have these changed much? <laughs> it seems like half of my turns I've gotten no change so far. Thought they would move a little faster. We do have some diplomacy to deal with. Uh, so this is Aqueous. They're doing the alliance now, so we'll take that. Great Trust is lawful. We're at war with Orsif. I don't think I care about that. Very weak, very weak. We won't much get much, but we'll be the good guys. Hey, Aminon. Uh Attempt cease or accept cease war. Offer truce. No, I don't want either. I'm just going to ignore you. There's no uh, hell no button. <laughs> I need a I need a hell no button or a nuts button. Nuts. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think that's it. So we did our hero stuff there. We're all set to go on a dungeon adventure. We're done there. Actually, they have one movement point. Get them closer to their... Oh, you have all six. You have all your movement points. Oh, it is the new turn. That's right. We get to go adventuring. All right. Uh, I need you to go over here. Keep giving me these adventures over this way. I guess I'll have to send the person over there. I think I'm just going to wait another turn. 
All right, so he's going to go chase those two. These guys will come down to get those, and that one will generate another rumor next turn and then go chase it down. Let's go adventuring. Time to go into a dungeon. All right, so two wizard types. Actually, no, that's one wizard type and one. Oh, yeah, two wizard types, two warrior types, or two druids, which are healer types, and two warrior types. All right. No adventurer. Any traps are just going to have to smash me in my face. Uh, enter. All right. So I could say yes to auto resolve. It shows here the percent chance that each hero dies during the adventure. So I could just tell it to fast forward and it would just pretty much instantly complete the adventure. It'd roll the dice and we could lose a hero. Heroes are going to die. You're going to lose heroes. Don't get attached to the heroes. Um, and probably I would just auto resolve this given that kind of a percentage. Um, and then it shows the number of turns for the heroes to complete the adventure. So it'll finish it. And then they're, then they're going to go rest in the town for three turns before they'll be available again. Um, up here, it shows our defensive enchantments and bonuses from our various characters. So defense bonus from the Aegis accumulation we have of the various characters Resistance bonuses from the guys that have Conserver. Heals after combat uh, from the, the healers are limited. And there is a limit to heals during combat too. And I'm not sure where that shows or how I know. Uh, I have to check that down. Um, penetration, which helps against certain enemies with certain uh, resistances. And then this is kind of like the opposite. There's physical penetration and then magical penetration. And then how many searches we can do to find additional treasure. So I'm going to go ahead and manually do this. So we're going to say no to the auto explore. And now we have this little map here and we just pick a direction. Um, so we're just going to march around the dungeon. We're going to run into rooms that have enemies. And then we're going to have fights. Some dungeons apparently have keys you have to find. And you have to get the keys before you can get into the boss room or the leader room. Um, so let's go ahead and just start moving. We'll go north first, I guess. A wide hall, and I'm not going to read out all this stuff, but there's graphics for the different locations, and they're adding more graphics and more descriptions as time goes by. Uh, so a wide hall, a broken iron and oak door leads to a worn tiled passage. Some of the floor tiles seem misplaced or overworn. Perhaps traps lie ahead. We should proceed with care. A little loud. Uh, can I get to these? I don't think I can get to these while I'm in the dungeon. <laughs> I can't turn the volume down on how loud that stuff is. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, let's just keep moving. Chamber of Sorcery. All right. So, heretics, you must die. So there's three enemies here. We have an Udobi warrior, or an Udode warrior. And the dungeons tend to be themed. I don't know how many different types there are, but there's... You get, like, a group which could be like undead or goblin types or an insects or mutated animals or I don't know how many different groups there are, but there's a bunch of different groups. And then apparently I think there's variations on top of that. So these guys look like vampires. Uh, warrior in the process of becoming undead. So it's a zombie undead dungeon. Um, and I'm not going to read through all of this. Then we have a cultist and we have a flesh golem. All right, so this is the hit points for each of the units, and each of these guys has stats, just like your characters do. Um, and what we get to do is we're gonna be fighting the enemy. First, we have to uh, apparently click fight. Where's my options? Oh, there we go. Uh, I click on a character, and they have a set of default options that they're already selected. So this is uh, to fight, melee attack. We get a plus two to hit when they select that. This guy is on uh, magic attack for plus two, and everybody else is on fight. But depending on the characters you have and what stats and abilities, you just pick an action for them to perform during this particular round. So mostly these guys are going to go fighting. Uh, the druids, we can do things like heal our units. We can say augment our defenses. Uh, I don't think I have any... Do any of you guys have... Oh, there we go. There's bash, which basically stuns the enemy for a round. Doesn't do much damage, but it uh, eliminates the enemy's action the next round. Go to block mode, which is also a taunt. So if you do this one, you're guaranteeing this guy is going to take like the first two hits during the fight round. 
uh, will come at him. So it's kind of a combination, increased defense and taunt action, uh, which could draw the, the damage or fire away from uh, weaker units. Uh, we don't want to evade, which, you know, doubles your defense, um, but lowers any chance to hit, all that kind of stuff. So that's basically how it works. We're going to set our actions for the round, and we're going to say fight. Fight's going to occur. A new round will start, and we just keep adjusting whatever actions we want for the characters until we eliminate the enemy. We can try to retreat. There's various rules for whether you can successfully retreat or not. Uh, I think it mostly has to do with the number of enemies that you encounter, whether you're going to be able to recruit, retreat. And there might be other factors, but that's the only one I remember. So for this one, for the wizards, hey, there's counter spell. Lower the chance. I think this mostly is used to lower the chance that they will try to magically stun us. But I don't think these guys have that. <laughs> I think these guys are all sudden blunder warrior types. Maybe the cultist? Uh... Uh, I don't know. I can't really tell. I think they're all melee types, so we're not going to worry about that for our adept. Uh, let's do Spellbind. This is the magical version of uh, stunning. So we'll try to Spellbind somebody. And we'll have Yanthus try to bash somebody. And everybody else will just do what they're doing. We took a hit! Hey! Oh, look at that. Nice. Well, that worked out pretty well for us. So we took one hit, one wound, but we successfully spellbound and bashed those two, so they're out of the next round. So I'm not sure how the targeting works. I don't know the rules for who's going to hit what. I don't know if it's randomized or if there's specific things that determine who they're going to go after. I believe there's an option on one of them that I remember seeing where they'll go after the weakest unit, but I don't know if we have to wait for somebody to be wounded for that to show up or if it was a particular character ability that had that. Uh, but let's go ahead and switch to full-on attack mode for this next round. Everybody takes swings. Now I can hit quick fight, and all it does is it makes the animations go by really fast. Uh, I'm just going to hit regular fight for the first few fights, but later I might switch to quick fight. But it's a whole lot of missing. We got a magical hit in. Man, these guys are tough to do damage to. All right, I'm going to switch you back to uh, block and uh, spellbind, or bash and spellbind again. We'll see if we can get away with that. There's the one. Slay. Attempt to target the most injured spawn. Let's do that one. Let's go after, I assume, the Flesh Golem. We'll see if he can uh, finish him off. <laughs> of course, we bash the guy. We bash the guy I'm trying to slay. Apparently, I did not successfully slay the guy. All right, still only took that one hit, so we're doing pretty good on defense. Uh, we got a lot of defense bonus, I think. I have to learn exactly how the systems work and the numbers, but um, we're holding up pretty well. I'm going to hit quick fight for this next one. I'm going to leave the same options. <laughs> That's quick fight. <laughs> so uh, we're still in good shape, and somebody stepped on some treasure, a gold and a couple of shards. The one guy's bash. This is another good round for us to go all ham. So let's go uh, slay attempt again and just everybody fight. All right, we killed him. That was quick. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Did we get lucky hits that finished him or did they run away or something? We got some bonus gold and stuff from the fight. Uh, so we got some XP. Everybody, oh, they did not get the same amounts. Why do you have 18? Uh, I don't know why he has more. I don't know if Killing Blow does something. Everybody has exactly 14 except for him. So somewhere he got an extra four. All right, 29 uh, spawns to go. Uh, you can leave. I can hit leave and we pop out of the dungeon. The dungeon stays here until somebody finishes it. And it's possible for other enemy heroes to come into your territory and finish your adventures, just like I can go into their territory. Um, so they can come over and finish it, uh, but it stays up until somebody actually clears it out. So we could leave, 
And we might want to do that if we were heavily injured and we were out of searches and we were out of out of out of healing. And I believe with longer adventure dungeons, you have a camp option. And I don't know if that's limited in how many times you can camp, but it refreshes your like search attempts and your out of combat healing options and things like that. So uh, we're gonna keep moving though. Let's go uh, north again. All right, this time we got a mage interrogation chamber. All right. Um, so a mage has been added to the list. And server resist magic and warlock weakens toughness and impenetrable. All right. All right, so let's do our thing we did last time. Let's do a uh, bash with you. And uh, maybe I'll do counterspell this time against that mage. Let's do that. We'll bash, we'll counterspell, and everybody else will just fight. Yeah, let's just stay on fight. That was loud. I gotta remember to change my volume when I finish this fight. Actually, I don't think I can until I get out of the dungeon. Okay, came out of it just fine. Uh, let's do another quick fight. I don't want to change anything. Flush columns at three. Still no. Oh, we took a little bit of damage there. I gotta be a little pretty cautious. We heal for three points when I do it, and it's. There, there's apparently a crit possibility that does double damage. So these things are doing between two and three points. So if they get a three, for example, and get a lucky crit, that could just flat kill our wizard. So I'm a little, I'm not sure exactly when I want to kick the heal off. Um, we're not getting many bashes off. Let's just switch to uh, melee attack. I'm going to leave him on counterspell and... Um, Let's do the magical attack. Maybe we need magic to get through damage on these guys. All right, five out of eight, five out of seven. Killed the, the one. A little more damage. Hmm. More golden shards. Heroes were healed. Now the heroes were healed thing, it's coming out of this pool. So it's counting down basically how long we can stay in here. We got 26 remaining. We're seeing three or four at a time. There's probably going to be a room with a bunch of them where we might be in trouble. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, I still can't get to these options until I get out of the dungeon. That seems weird. Have I played DD Empires? I have not. I know of the game. I remember looking into it at some point, but I never actually played it. All right, we are continuing. Now we have to take a take a turn. Collapse tall. We're gonna hit a hit a trap. Hidden hidden entrance. Chamber of Sorcery. I think there's secret doors also, which I don't know if you have to move into them or if only an adventurer can find them or how they work. Or maybe you have to actually use one of your search actions. I have to remember to use my search actions. So it says hidden entrance here. I don't know if that means the path ahead was revealed or if it's going to be one of the side ones, but uh, I'll try to remember to use a search action after we do this fight. Uh, not much different here, so we'll just keep with the same strategy, I think. I'm going to keep him on counterspell against the mage. Go for the magic attack. Uh, let's actually switch all of these guys to magic. We'll switch the druids and the mage to magic. Maybe we'll get better results. These guys seem pretty resistant otherwise. And they only say melee 9 and armor 4, but it sure feels like they're not taking much damage. I get a feel more for the combat system and how all the numbers work. So 
but got a good hit on the uh, the warrior. No hits. Uh, we took one damage there. Three gold. Flesh golems almost gone. Looking good still. <laughs> one hit point left. All right. Kind of sucks that it takes away one of my heals after combat slots for like one hit point. <laughs> I'd kind of like it to not do it. Maybe give me an option, a yes, no. Do you want to use a heal after combat instead of it just automatically topping me up every single time? Because I'd rather move over to another fight if, like, this guy took one hit point damage instead of using up one of my rare heal after combat slots. We still got a ways to go. All right, let's try to search before I forget. It was a secret door. And that's loud. Uh, so hidden entrance apparently did mean something. So we searched successfully. Uh, I didn't, all the messages just went away and I didn't see what they actually said. Uh, I don't think there's a way for me to see what that said. <laughs> Let's see, events? Nope. Uh, summary? No, that's all map stuff. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for me to see what that said. Oh well. I guess you guys saw it, or I can go back and watch the playback later. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the passage that we just opened, I guess. So south we go. Falling rubble! There we go. That would be a trap-type thing. So we uncovered a hidden entrance that just went into a trap. <laughs> That's kind of... Oh, primitive golems in here. Guy's door is open into a clean, chiseled chamber. Rarely seen the light or people within its confines. And then we stepped on a trap, and a primitive go golem is here. All right, that dude looks pretty big. XP value of 36, block, resistant, 30% magic reduction, and tough. So he's got both magic and melee reduction. That's where the penetration skills come into play, is countering those kinds of reductions. 10 melee rating, 11 resistance. Luckily, not a lot of weapon and armor. That resistance is just going to be probably a flat reduction. All right. Uh, let's stay with the magic, I think. I don't need you doing that anymore. Switch to magic with you, too. And let's see what happens. I think... Was it the magic that was getting through mostly? I think it was the magic that was mostly getting him, but... Uh-oh, we got a magic item. A thought ring. 42 gold, 9 gold, 4 gold. Replacing a current item will send him back to the vault, so it's an intelligence plus 1 ring, huh? Uh, so I get to pick who it goes to. Um, let's give it to the Magnus Wither. Going in. So, he's got Intelligence 5. Also 5, 4, 2, yeah, definitely you. Alright, so he's got his uh, mind slot. Why is the highlighter way the hell down there? <laughs> that doesn't do me any good. Okay, I wonder if that's because of this. Yeah, so... By increasing the UI, for some reason, the spacing where that's located is down and to the right, and it's getting pushed way off the bottom of my screen. Huh. All right, give me a second. Oops. All right, just needed to make a screenshot real quick to 
let the dev know the UI. I'm finding a lot of things where if you increase the UI, various things like that happen. I don't know if he can fix that kind of thing or not, but it'd be nice to be able to actually see the info without it being off the bottom of the screen just because I'm playing with a better or a larger UI. But I don't know how much effort goes into that kind of thing. All right, so we got a magic item. We still got 23 enemies in here, and I don't think this was the uh, the final room. That was just a secret area that happened to have a magic item for us and a golem. Keep moving. We've still got... Holy crap, what happened here? Did everybody take damage and it counts each person that it heals? Because holy crap. <laughs> My heals after combat just vaporized. Um, we might have to come back in. Yeah, let's leave. I can adjust the volume and then we'll continue uh, the next day. So we're out of here. Hey, volume. Uh, volume. Found volume. You need to go way down. I'm not sure which section that dungeon stuff is in. Okay, so we're back out. Um, they'll reset, I believe, at the end of the day, and we'll be able to go back in again. Uh, what else? I think everybody else was done. I think that was the only other thing I was doing. War. Still seems a bit loud for those volume settings I gave it. I don't know if they're using different settings or if I just need to keep dialing things down. All right, so turn summary. Everything looks fine. Uh, 62 out of our 67 max, so we're still making too much food. Um, a new alchemist has arrived, so that's where I need to take a look to make sure I remember to go adjust. Um, we got trade offers and cease war offers again from Eminon. Screw you. Okay, okay, and trade. All right. Do uh, research. We got another alchemist. Get you here. Hey, we're up to five out of 30. Four out of 30. They are just creeping along. Man, it's going to take forever to get these things to raise. Maybe I will put uh, a few somewhere else. Let's, uh, let's back out of that one. Let's go for the harvester bonus, the excavator bonus, and I guess we'll do back into armors and heat. All right. Diplomacy. Show me offers. Uh, offers. You were ignoring Mars House. We looked at that one. Now you guys want to talk? <laughs> um, trade agreement, huh? Sure. I don't think it'll be along that around that long, but another feudal. I think most of these, we're helping them and we're really getting nothing out of it ourselves. I need to look at the list a bit more often and see just how this shakes out. Aqueous. Uh, what do you guys want? Uh, trade agreement? I thought we already had one. We're allied, but we didn't have the trade agreement first. Hmm. I offered it to him at least once. Okay, that's all I care about there for now. Um, what heroes did we get? Wizard and a sorcerer. Heck yeah. I'll take... Oh, too many heroes in our roster. All right, I maxed out the list. So we got two guys off to the side. So what do we got in here? Two warriors and two mage types. Oh, God, I don't have any clerics, do I? I don't have any clerics. So I either got to pull one out of this group or I got to fire somebody. Who's getting fired? Somebody's getting fired. Hangan or Zarian? Uh, let's go look at heroes. 
So Zarian. No, oh, it's definitely Zarian. All right, you're out of here, Zarian. Uh, is this one I have to alt click? All right. Okay, so that'll open a slot up. Hopefully next round we get a uh, healer type in that group. Got too many warrior types. Let's go. You finish exploring here. False rumor. And it is medium. And you guys. Revealed nothing. Oops, I took the whole group over. Oh. No results again. Too many things out here already, and none of them, uh, not enough of them are low. <laughs> False rumor. And we can't go into that one until next turn. All right, I really hope it's low. I might have to send my group down south and see where the rumors and stuff appear down here. I think it's proximate to where you got the rumor, where it's going to put the possible location. So, I don't want to go after mediums. I think mediums would just crush me. Okay, economy. What are we up to for horsies? Ooh, 66. We're getting closer. Problem is I've been uh, I've been using some of my iron, and uh, we're still a long way from either that or enough horses. We'll have enough. I could buy enough horses to get the armored knights, but I wouldn't be able to buy enough iron. Look at that, two hundred and forty for ten units. Damn, iron's at twenty four. Now let's do our food sales. I don't think I moved my army last time. I think they sat here about me uh, actually getting moved forward. Look at this. Uh-oh. My ally is not doing well. Let's get to Mary Hill. All right. And... Uh, I can't do light cav. We're 34 away from that one. Let's buy 10 horses. See if over the next couple of turns with what we produce and what I can buy if we can get over that 100 number and get some light cav added over to that army over there. Um, let's see. You guys finished your market. Um, they've got a small town, unfortunately. Only one more slot. I'm one shard short, huh? Harvester or excavator? We're not having a problem with food. Wood hasn't reared its ugly head yet, so I think I'm going to go excavator for the iron and stone. Most of the buildings we want to build take uh, large amounts of stone. Iron's the other one I need for warrior stuff, so go ahead and build the excavator. Okay, done with economy, done with districts, done with research, diplomacy. Still don't have a screw you button. Battles to look at, our heroes are taken care of, nothing in our vault. I think that's it. Oops. Right. <laughs> Let's go back into the dungeon. Everybody ready again? In we go. 
All right, uh, let's go the other way this time. Collapse tall. A Lurse Lassertillion Stalker. What is that, a battle, battle newt? <laughs> it looks like a battle newt. Giant mutated iguana. It's a battle iguana. Used as a hunting dog for lizard men. Okay. Doesn't look too scary. Um, cultist and the mage. Let's set uh, one of our guys to counter spell and... The druids keep going melee. Let's go magic instead. I hit twice. Aim two at least. All right. 17 heals. Uh, keep going. Decorative hall, 20 spawns remaining. Twisted corridors. Libraries. Let's do a search in the library. Why not? Nothing to be found. I wonder if you have to save your searches for... Hey, it says hidden entrance. So... I don't have the option to search again. Huh. Oh. It says, it, it says hidden entrance. Said lots of these. <laughs> More damage. And we hit a dead end. That's uh can't search. Oh, never mind, I'm fighting. Uh same thing. I'm not gonna change my settings. Hey, everybody's wounded though. Hmm. Let's do uh let's do some healing. Heal the adept. Spellbound me, you bastard. You're supposed to stop that adept. Um, let's go back to that. Ha! <laughs> Bashed you. Ooh, big hit. Ouch. All right, Druid, back to healing, please. Uh, oh, okay. Oops, I should have taken, taken it off. Should have taken him off healing. All right, uh, experience, golden shards, and help. And dead end. 17 to go still. And we're down, we're, long, we're out of heals again. Man. Opening hallway. <laughs> uh, another trap. Yeah, I got to get some adventurers, but I have not yet seen a single adventurer come to this uh, kingdom. I don't know how you go about getting a, an adventurer <laughs> or any character type that uh, your kingdom doesn't normally support. Holy crap. Man, we're in trouble now. We got hit with poison vials and we have a whole bunch of the battle iguanas coming after us. This could be painful. Yeah, the thieves we need are called adventurers. <laughs> but my kingdom doesn't seem to hire any. That's the whole point of the adventurers. They give you better loot in the dungeons and they find, they spot and uh, have a chance to disarm traps. My stupid kingdom likes warriors, 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 though. And the occasional healer or uh, sorcerer, but not a single adventurer yet. All right, uh, let's see. 
I don't think we have any magic out there to deal with, so let's go uh, magic attack. I'm going to put Yanthus on Bash. Maybe I'll put a couple of them on Bash. We'll put these guys on Bash to stun while the mages just try to rip into them. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, one's dead. Okay. Uh, we're taking a little bit of damage. Experience, shards, and gold. Still alive? Ring of Perception. Alright, cleverness plus two, huh? And we are out of Heels After Combat. We got to bail again. Got it down to 12. I think next time we'll probably be able to finish it. So let's go ahead and use our last search. And leave. Okay. Uh, now we are done. Done moving. All the heroes are done. I'll have to take a look at the diplomatic situation. Up north especially, I'm curious if the uh, main bad guy has broken out of Mordor yet. Alright. Oh, only 50 surplus. Month of summer. Huh? Hmm. 62 food produced. We're only consuming 44 still. I guess I sold down a little bit much last time. I'm going to have to wait. Uh, another turn before I sell again, I think. Uh, nothing with the alchemists. Uh, trade offers came in. And we're earning a little cash. All right. Hey there, Leandor. What do you got? Sure. All right, let's go look up north for a sec. So these are the main bad guys of the scenario. Um, so if we have diplomacy open and we click on them, servants of Dreul, they don't have any wars going on currently, so they're still biding their time, apparently. How about the other supposed bad guys? Uh, them Black Crown, also no war. Oh, nope, wars with Fjord and Torum. Torum and... Uh, you are. All right. They're two smaller neighbors, neighbors thereafter. Mm. I'm not sure who else is considered a bad guy. There's a lot of fighting going on, but uh, I'm not going to concern myself with most of that. What do we got going on over here? So, hey, you. Uh, what's our supply situation? Still got supply. I guess I'm going to go find out just how tough these guys are. So you can't see what's in the pile, but you've got universal vision, but you don't know what's inside the tiles until you go up and actually encounter them. Um, so let's just go find out. Well, that doesn't look healthy. <laughs> Ouch, that's two morale to my one morale. Plus, he's got cavalry units, which means I could get hurt pretty bad, especially out here on an open plain. He's not across a river. All right, so the numbers to the left and right uh, are two different entries. I think one is, uh, what was it, leadership on the left, I think, and terrain on the right? 
I forgot now. I'm going to have to go pull the manual up so I can double check. I don't think it shows on these screens. Yeah, it doesn't show on these screens. Um, yeah, but there's three numbers. There's the plus zero, the percentage up above, and then the, the symbol there. Um, and they mean specific things as well as the info on the, the, the chart here. There's no fortification, um, but he's inside of a location right at that spot. I'm going to try to fight because I just need to learn how this stuff works. Um, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. Looks like that's the only unit. He's got like a main army group up here just kind of doing things to my poor ally. Um, he's probably just got defensive units at these other locations. So that's probably the only thing we need to deal with. I don't know if my ally, I can't, it's weird that I can't see my allies information. That does seem weird. You'd think with an alliance, you'd be able to see what their units are. Because I have no idea if this guy can handle this or not, or if he's in trouble. I don't really have a way of gauging that. I could also run him over as a uh, leader for that army. Got a leadership of nine. Yeah, let's run him over real quick. Lead the army, Angan. Wolf cavalry and swordsmen. Strength, move, melee, pursuit, armor, and morale. That didn't seem like a good result. We've got no movement left. So I can't go in again. Leave. Um, yeah. All right, let's go look at the details. There's a uh, battle results screen. It was a siege battle because the defender is in a location. So, attacker was me, led by Angan. We were a plus nine versus his leader, Vimal, at plus eight. So we had a small advantage in leadership, which I don't remember all the things that affects, but it does have an effect. Whoever has the higher leadership uh, in the fight gets bonuses. Uh, the gods favor no one in this battle. That's a random roll um, to kind of randomize the, the combat values. And uh, I think leadership plays into the chances of which way this is going to go. Attacking strength 60 versus defending strength. Uh, that's, that's not a good... I don't like being weak against trained. Uh, there was no fortification bonus in that location. So we lost two, he lost one. Not a, not a great matchup. Ah, I'm worried about what's going to happen when he counterattacks. All right, let's turn supply off. We'll see what happens there next round. Uh, uh, you need to investigate. Another extreme one. Nope, we're out of there. And then uh, you guys, you're going back up there. You're going over here. All right, got a couple more uncovered. One more and nothing. All right. Yeah, I think we've kind of saturated the area, but at least we got three more to check. So we'll have each of them run to one of those next round. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one we'll probably have to wait to go into, but whatever. Uh, so heroes are done other than these guys. Am I done otherwise? Don't want to sell food. Is it time to buy more horses? We're at 87. We're so close. Oof. Ouch. I think I'm going to have to continue waiting. We're generating 11, so two more turns we'll have. We'll be over the 100 we need for the cavalry. 
going to be the iron. So we're generating six. We only have 12. Ouch. Ouch. Iron production. What are you doing to me? Where's my iron going? What have I been spending my iron on? Those buildings I built turns ago? I'm not sure where my iron's going. Hmm. That stuff's crazy expensive. All right. We can't do that. Can't do that. Um, researching is still just snail pacing. Damn, how long is this going to take? That is way slower than I thought it was going to be. All right. Uh, we've done diplomacy. Back to the battle. Done our heroes except for the dungeon. All right, let's finish this dungeon up. 12 remaining enemies. Um, let's go, I think, back around here. Okay. I'll switch you and leave everybody else the same. Go bash on him. Good job, basher. Good job. Now switch to that. No damage yet. Healed for two. Damn it. I thought we got out of that without any damage. All right. Mm, a flawed golem versus a flesh golem, huh? That guy is 35 XP versus 25. All right. Uh, back to stun somebody. You failed. Took a hit and took a hit. Down to seven. Two fights? Or maybe one fight with seven. That'd be a little scary. Hopefully it's still two fights. Okay. Decorative hall. Shall we search it? Some golden shards. Another, another trap plus a mage. Uh... All fine. We don't need the stun. All right. So it's this fight and then one more, most likely, and we're all done. Uh, nothing too scary here. Still got 10 heals after combat. Hopefully they don't hit us much and um, we can finish out this dungeon this run. I'd hate to have to come back again. Um, let's go bash again and ah, we got spellbound. Okay, now we got to back all the way out again. Final room. Enchantments. Magic using heroes give offense. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are my enchantments. Okay. Um, again, nothing special. We're full health. Uh, we should be fine. So bash is okay. Magic's okay. Go for it. That was a good first round. All right. Not so good follow-up rounds. Bong. Loud. So loud. <laughs> Little pile of rotten food. 
All right, so victory. We'll search this room. There's nothing. Uh, we got no spawns remaining. I guess we're out of here. And the dungeon is gone. Okay. So, let's see. No movement, no movement. You have movement. False rumor. Think we are all set again. I'm curious what's going to happen over here. Now, if he comes out of that location, it counts as him sallying forth <laughs> from a, an entrenched position. So he takes a loss if he tries to fight me from there. So I don't know if he'll do that or not do anything or if he'll like move out and then move into me so he's not in a, a location. Uh, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to see at the speed the thing processes turns. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. I'll be able to look at a battle report if he fights me, but I don't know if I'll be able to see his movement. Did he split his group? I think he split his group. And he went and got two different locations. Those guys are having a pretty hard time breaking into that uh, fortress. Okay, so uh, we're at max food again. We got a plentiful harvest. We're at the end of summer. And uh, nothing new, no improvements, not collaborating, lots of trade. Okay. Ah, I think all of his cavalry moved over there. An odd choice. I mean, sure, I'll chase him around. We'll see if he's going to split his forces. We'll try to eliminate this one. All the numbers are zero still. Huh. So he lost two, we lost none. He lost one. And he lost five and retreated. I'm not sure I wanted ownership of that. All right. Well, we want to fight. Might be able to finish him next round. Um, let's see. Our main hero group is uh, back to full. They're all level two now, which raises a primary stat, and then it randomly picks a secondary stat from a particular group. Gather rumors, explore rumors, enter, extort, <laughs> extort money from a corrupt official, incite, spread rumors and lower stability, hoodwink, steal gold to give to the poor, lead the army, governor, and find enemies. Search for enemy heroes. Hmm. I don't know if that's a proximity thing or how that works exactly, because I don't think we can see their heroes unless we become adjacent to them and or search. I don't know how that works. All right, so let's go you to there. Floor, false rumor. You to there. All right, everything's explored. I got no low ones again. I got multiple extremes, multiple mediums, and a hard. So let's move this group south, and we'll see if we can get some stuff to spawn down here. I'll spread guys out to these three. So let's, uh, let's just do three and three, I guess. <laughs> Naturally, it puts them right back where I was. Just seems to like this area. Um, all right, well, you got movement. Another medium.
false and false. Didn't do me much good. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> it appeared right under my feet. Man, another extreme. The, the the propensity for extremes to show up in the early game seems a little odd. In the test game I did before I did this live stream, like the first 10 of these that I located, it was like three extremes, four hards, three mediums, and a and a low. <laughs> it was it's just ridiculously I don't know if it's totally randomized or what, but it sure feels like it should give you a higher chance for low. Then all these other ones, I'm, I'm just getting these massive accumulations of extremes and hards and no lows. I might have to comment <laughs> to the dev on that. I don't know if it's just me suffering the usual outrageous Vorm difficulty modifier or if um, the game actually just totally randomly picks which kind and I, you know, I'm just getting screwed. I can't do much with uh, with all these hards and extremes, and even the mediums uh, would just roast, I think, this group. So, ah, I'm not sure. We still have movement points. We could actually fight him, but no, nah, let's not do that. Not with only two movement points. We take a big negative to our combat power if we try that. All right. Well, uh, 22 corruption curse effect on stability zero. Hmm. Um, I'll have to do some research. I know it's bad. I don't know how it generates or how I get rid of it. It's probably, yeah, I don't know. 98 horsies. Still got the iron problem. Ah, I wonder which nations have iron. And you can't set up, as far as I know, diplomatic things to, to trade resources or anything. It's all done through that buy, sell merchant stuff. Why are you not weird? Wouldn't switch to Cartier until I zoomed out. Yeah, there's no, I mean, you can give them a gift of gold and you can do research, cooperation and trade, but uh, there's no trading of resources directly or anything like that. And you can't build resource locations. All you can do is do the research, which is glacial speed um, to get upgrades to whatever your base production level is for your kingdom. I'm not sure how anybody ever really, I mean, we we're only, I don't know. We're, I don't know how many turns we're in. Oh, turn seven. We're only seven turns in out of 180, but still, that seems like a really slow progression. All right. Um, well, other than that, I don't know how I'm ever going to uh, be able to afford like a second army. Just the length of time it's going to take to make one cavalry unit. <laughs> and I need five other units to go with that one cavalry unit. Uh, huh. I think I'm done. Am I forgetting anything? Well, let's go look at a battle report. Uh, did we hit that one guy four times? I don't think so. It doesn't show times on these. It just shows the locations. 524. Let's say we're all. Huh. Defender retreats. So that's the most recent one. Nine to a six. He gets a default plus six. He doesn't have a, an actual character there being a leader like his uh, cavalry unit. So that's the default. No bonus. Still not sure why it says we're weak. Is it just because we have militiamen, including the other ones? Hmm. Got more units creeping up.
I think that's how those little nations stay together in the early turns. If they get attacked, the enemy has to break into like a fortification level four or five location, which probably is really hard with starter units, um, assuming they don't have uh, siege machines. The bonuses are probably pretty extreme for an early unit to try to overcome. Um, surplus of 75? Did I build a granary? <laughs> How do we go from 67 to 75? I f did I forget to sell uh, food last time? Got a plentiful harvest. Huh. Uh-oh. Not pleased with the occupation of their lands. Okay. Everfield's where I'm sitting, where we're fighting from, that I liberated. Uh, What's going on there? How's that work? So his unit pulled back. Still need to try to go get rid of them. Hmm. I mean, still Cartier. It's all grassland. So, I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, did he pull his calf back? I have to wait a turn before I attack. I don't want to attack in with no, no movement points. Assuming that's the unit I hit last time, given the movement arrows. I think he moved his cav, he rushed his cav back down south. I think that's the cav unit, and that's the unit I hit earlier. All right, well, if we can get rid of that guy, uh, hopefully we can uh, get Cardi or some relief. Uh, yeah, all of these stupid dungeons being such high level, not helping. Let's uh, split these guys up even further. Then Jonan down there. All right, we're going deep into the forest. Hello! Hey, we found another one. Awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say scouting on this one. 94% chance of death. Well, that's because only one person's going in. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to fast resolve this one. So next turn we'll get everybody grouped up again on this spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not sure if it'll let me enter. Oh, actually, it's that spot. Yeah, still six spaces. I'm not sure I'll be able to get him into the group and get into that dungeon next turn. But we'll give it a try. Not the militia. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I keep looking at the wrong numbers for movement. All right, so uh, one of these guys is actually extra. Uh, two warriors, the adept and the druid. I think he's the extra. Oh, no, Jonan belongs. Ah, whatever, I'll figure it out next turn. They're all level two. Oh, that's the, oh, Omicia is the one that doesn't belong. All right, we'll move her along. We'll have her go get some more rumors while the rest of them head in there next turn. Um, new ones generated, huh? All right. I 
think that's it for the unit movement. We've got some cash accumulated. We've got our horses. We're just desperately short on iron. So let's go buy some iron. And armored knights. Still no light cav. There we go. That's what I want. Build light cav. Four turns. We have five money. <laughs> and we're back to 10 horses. Oh my God. And four iron. For one unit, it's taken this long to just eight turns of pretty focused waiting <laughs> to get this one unit built. Man. Yeah, we do have 75 food storage. I didn't build any granaries, so where did this come from? Do we now technically like own Everfield or something weird? <laughs> I'm not sure where the extra capacity came in. Because I did not build a granary. Hmm. Excavator is ready next turn. Yeah, we're not going to be able to build anything for a while anyway. Oh, that is so slow. Nine out of 30. Hey, some progress finally. But yeah, it's going so slow. All right, that's going to be all the time I've got for now for Kingdom Dungeon and Hero. It's about 3.30 a.m. my time. I should probably go try to sleep for a little bit. So I'm going to go do that. <clears throat> you guys keep having fun doing whatever you're doing other than watching me. Uh, I will uh, return for some more Kingdom Dungeon Hero, so I'm still intrigued. Uh, lots to learn, lots to do still. Hopefully we'll speed run through that next low dungeon. I have no idea how equipped or leveled characters need to be to go to like the next level to like the medium dungeon. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of enemies in those other dungeons and I assume the difficulty goes up as well. So I don't know if there's like a rough benchmark for you need to like level three characters to go into a medium or is it dependent on the gear they find or how, how do you determine that? I might have to do some diving into the, uh, the discord or the steam discussion sections to see if there's some indicator I don't want to just go get a bunch of heroes I've had running around just wiped. Cause I have no idea how hard something's going to be given the long time it takes to apparently build things up. So, Oh, I know what I've been forgetting. I've been forgetting to check which new heroes have been available so I could swap somebody out again. Um, we might have had an adventurer or two show up to help us with those traps. I kept forgetting to uh, check each turn for what heroes were showing up. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe out there.